3, 2, 1, roll the footage. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Simon Severino, your host. What if you could hang out with sprinters and ask them about their problems, their workflows, and the solutions they found? That's what we do every day, right here on Strategy Sprints Podcast. And today, we the explore with the founder of the success finder, how to build a company around purpose, why cutting out the noise is vital, and how to build relationships that strengthen your company. Welcome, everybody. Brandon Strassa. What is going on, man? It is uh, it's bright and early here. I had you on earlier in my show this week, and I'm just stoked to be here with you and your listeners. Isn't it cool? Double trouble this week. Double Buckle the trouble. Up, Buckle up. I, I'm really, the only reason I'm here is to see if I ever get to the one of the five, and I'm not disappointed if I don't. Let's see, because we pick only one per week to be also featured in our newsletter. You might. Let's see. Let's see. What are you currently creating? I am currently creating a company for purpose called the Success Finder. Now, it's not my first company, but the foundation that I laid over the last 20 years has allowed me to be where I'm sitting right now. And so I realized that in the coaching and mastermind space, there needed to be something to cut out the noise, the noise of social media. And hey, I get it. There's a purpose for it. I love it. It makes sense. But when it comes to me wanting to work with my coach, when it comes to me wanting to work inside the masterminds that I'm a part of or I surround myself with, I don't need to sit there and see other notifications. I need to see what I want, when I need it, when it's most important to me. And so we built out the success finder for coaches and masterminds to work with their community in a safe place to where you don't need eight tools to do one thing, which is actually connect, network, and move the needle forward. Cool. And how do you block out the rest? And how do you find the balance, what to let in and what to block out? Yeah, I think a lot of if we're talking about the noise that's out there in some aspects, I think it's the marketers. So there's there's great coaches all over the world, but they're being out marketed by the marketers. So picture picture your life as a bridge. You're right here and you want to get here. But if you get sold into a coaching program or mastermind that has, you know, someone has bedazzled that bridge, the the point of time for you to hear noise is going to take you a lot further off your path as opposed to that straight line. So we wanted to make sure that, you know, you didn't have where you saw a post five days ago that pertains nothing to you, but Mark Zuckerberg wants to keep you on Facebook and they get that hook. You know, you're not having to fight, fight those crazy algorithms so your coach and the, and the masterminds that you're part of are able to connect and make sure you hear the right message, the right signal. And then on the flip side, we also wanted to create intent because it's not just a one-sided thing. We wanted to create intent from the consumer, the members that are working with the coaches. So if they truly want to hear that signal, they truly want to hear that message that is important to them, they're going to go find it because their coach or their mastermind is going to say, hey, this is where you go get the information. When you need X, you go here. You go to the one place where you know that that's all that you're going to get. We don't have fancy marketers on our platform, meaning you're not going to see advertisements. One coach, one mastermind can't out market the other person. Now, yes, we market to bring more members to the platform to find the right coaches, to find the right masterminds. But you're not going to get a marketing piece from another coach that pops up above because of the fact that they paid more to be there or to get to distract you. So that's really the reason that we have built the success finder, cut out the noise, help you find your signal in one place, your communication, your video, your course content, all of that in one location. And so there we go as the success finder. I'm sure we'll get into the for purpose part of the company and how we're going to reinvest not only in the community, but also in the younger generation. Cause I think that's a, such a big thing. You and I are fathers and the, the, this next generation to me is so important, not just if I wasn't a parent, but it's just so important and how they get it right and how they make a difference because entrepreneurship, man, It's on the rise. It's not just a fake, funny word that people say, I'm an entrepreneur anymore. It's on the rise. And I'm so stoked about that because I have conversations with my six-year-old son 
about being an entrepreneur and does he want to go standard education, you know, college, university, or does he want to learn from, from, you know, at this point, he still probably calls me daddy. Does he want to learn from daddy's friends? Like, like you, and I'm going to, I'm going to hope unless he wants to be a doctor, nurse, or engineer, he's coming and he's working with someone like you. The six year old has already these discussions. That's beautiful. Mine. He asked me, daddy, what, what's actually your work? And I said, hmm, you know, when we play Lego and you don't know how to get that tire on the car, that's a problem that we need to solve. I help people solve these problems. Yeah. Yeah. They want to yeah. build Here. something. I help them solve this problem. How to get the tire on a car. Oh, cool job. <laughs> I get the same thing, but also from my wife who, you know, my 39 year old wife and my six year old son, what do I do for a living? But this is the stuff that I do with my son. You probably can't see it right there, but wow. this was us working out margins on a product that he was wanting to sell broomsticks because he's into Harry Potter and just figuring out costs and, and how he solves a problem because kids need to learn how to fly on broomsticks and have more fun at a young age. So that's the kind of stuff that we get to discuss in my household, which is super cool. Wow. Your, your breakfasts are masterminds. That's why you, you have created this, the stuff around it. Yeah. Uh, well, here's the thing. It's the trip advisors for for the self-education space why hasn't there been this so far and all i looked at it it was like when i left my first mastermind a few years ago i was like oh my gosh how lucky did i get it worked out like i surrounded myself with the right people in the right order at the right time but how many people don't have a 20-year runway to make sure that when they invest in the most important investment in themselves bigger than the stock market bigger than the housing market bigger than Bitcoin, even dare I say the biggest investment you're ever going to have is yourself because you can't control those. I'm in all three of those, but I can control myself. And so that's what we want to help curate and, and secure is the right experience with the right people in the right order for not only the coaches and masterminds, but also their members. You have said the trick award Bitcoin. Now I'm thinking only about Bitcoin. I just invested today again in Bitcoin. I can't think about. Nothing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Love the dip. Exactly. But masterminds, I'm also a big, big um, participant and host of masterminds. And uh, they have they have saved my my lockdown years from being alone, from being overwhelmed. It is connection. It is insight. It is growth as a human being. And um, how did you what what were your process of finding the right masterminds? I usually I just jump in and then and then I find out. So that was the experience for my first mastermind. And that's why I say I got lucky because I just jumped in. Like so I call someone up. I said, hey, I interviewed you and I listened to your podcast and you use this word called mastermind. I didn't even Google it. Like <laughs> didn't even Google what is a mastermind because if you do, a lot of stuff's actually going to come up. Coincidentally, now I have a podcast called The Mastermind Effect and The Success Finder. But a few years ago, I didn't know. And so I just went all in. I didn't stick my toe in the pool in the deep end. I just jumped you know, head first and it paid off. Like when I'm leaving, I'm like, this is amazing. How have I sat under a rock for 20 years and nobody told me about coaching? Nobody told me about masterminds, but here's the key thing. If you want to see around corners, if you want to go to the front of the line at Disney world, you just want to go to the front of the line anywhere. A mastermind is so key to changing how you do things because you're in a room with people that are in different industries. They, they, they look at problems as, you know, how can we create solutions differently? And even if they're not in the same industry, I can plug and play. So I call it my Rubik's cube. I take something from someone else that they're like, no, 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 I'm going to fast track you. I'm going to save you five steps, put it inside my Rubik's cube, move it around and how it pertains to me. And then I can solve a problem in my other company. So I have changed the face in the last few years of every business that I still have ownership in or that I've exited from and how we accomplish things and making work life balance a happier place. Like I've got happier employees because of masterminds. Wow. And when did you start your current company and how did you start it? So uh, my the success finder still, you know, I'm, and I've got a few other ones that are over 10 years old, but the success finder was when I left my first mastermind. I'm sitting in an airport and I'm stuck and I don't speak the language, but they, all I did get out of it is you've been booted from this flight. I didn't do anything wrong, by the way. 
but I didn't speak the language. So I get on the phone, figure out how to get back home because I was halfway across the world and I just wanted to get home. And I sat there and I start buying the URLs. I'm like, this isn't cool. What if I can create a solution, create an easier place? And so I start buying up the URLs. Then I start putting together, you know, different teams. And I'll, I'll be honest with you. I had put together a few really great people, but they just weren't right for what we were building with the success finder. So it took me a few years to find the right developers. And one of the developers or the, the key developer, by the way, was one of the creators of what we now called Amazon World Services, AWS. So when Amazon bought out what he and his partners had built, that's that's one of the brain children behind what we're building. And so I feel that I at this point, I've kind of taken the the Justice League from DC and the Avengers from Marvel and brought it together to one centralized team and, and, and partnership that's able to help move the needle because that's the big thing I also learned. You surround yourself with the right people. Sometimes you're gonna have to remove people. And when I started removing people and then replacing them with the right people, the world just changed. How I was able to accomplish things just changed. And so that's been a huge, huge step because of masterminds and how I started the company was replacing people that didn't, I didn't serve and they didn't serve me properly. And how did purpose play a role in this phase? I went to, and I, I don't take that side lightly because it takes me back to a memory. I was at a conference called Thrive, Make Money Matter. And they start talking about building a company of purpose, bomb a sock, buy a sock, give a sock. And all of a sudden I'm like, my gosh, I've been doing some things wrong. How can I create something for a purpose? I've built my foundation. I've exited a successful company that we had over 500 employees doing over 2 billion a year in sales. I still had my oldest company with over 8,000 clients, but how do I take this next company and build it for purpose to reinvest not only in the people in that community, but also help grow up that next generation? And when you've built your foundation, it becomes a lot clearer. It becomes a lot easier. At least it did for me at the time. And so I'm like, listen, if we're going to build a company to make a change, to change over a $50 billion a year industry to help solve a problem, we have to give back. So when we start invest, when people start investing in us, being on the platform, wanting to be there, we need to invest in them. So we're going to hold a portion of our proceeds back, reinvest in the members that are purchasing coaches, purchasing masterminds through the platform, working with, working with the people that we've curated, that we've vetted, that we've made sure, Hey, these are the result leaders. I love a good thought leader, but my six year old has a thought when he gets up. So let's get that result leader going. And then we're going to hold another portion of the proceeds back. And here's the best example. We call it the Sally fund. Sally's 14. She comes from a household where the dad works a night job and the mom works a double and not in the best school district. Timmy's 28. He grew up in the standard nine to five family, mom and dad just going. But Sally at 14 has more life experiences than Timmy at 28. And that's okay. That's not Timmy's fault. So what if we, what if we in, reinvest in our coaches and reinvest in the community? So now we get Sally, that coach or that mastermind. What is she able to solve by the time she's 15, 16, 17, 18? What problem can she solve? And so we'll pay our coaches as we find those Sally's and we'll help uplift them to make sure that next generation has access to people like you. Powerful. And so you started this company and uh, right now, what are things that you need to solve there and that excite you? The things that we need to solve is explaining why the current platforms that are out there are just creating more noise. Why the Facebook groups? Great. We've got groups on our platform without the advertisement. Why the Facebook, the Instagram, the LinkedIn, all good platforms. But what they're creating is just more noise. If the coaches truly want to be able to work with their clients in an area where they can get more clients, by the way, because our platform definitely allows for that. Okay then they need to cut they need to cut that noise out of their clients process because it's just creating more problems for them it's getting distracted i know when i go to facebook albeit seldom that when i get there i'm like okay focus you're here to do one thing and i can distract myself hands down every time i go into it i see a little ding that says oh i need this i see another thing oh what's my sister up to what's my mom up to oh, i can call them and find out without looking at facebook but it does distract me so the big thing that we're, we're working on right now is finding the right coaches in the right order. 
we want to have the people that sit there and say, hey, enough is enough. I'm still going to be on social. I get that. But the right coaches that actually want to cut out the noise for their clients. So it's really, it's a process finding those coaches, those masterminds that want to utilize the right, you know, the right platform to make sure they're taking care of their people. So it's having conversations. One to one is a lot of the way that we're doing it. And eventually we'll get the one to many. It just takes time to have those conversations. I want to know everything about how we can build our companies around purpose after one word from our sponsors. Hey, if you like the tools, go grab them for free at strategysprints.com slash tools. So how do we get a grip around purpose and how do we build our company around that? For me, it was really taking what had already been built and what was going to be built. And then how do you pair that together? How do you actually kind of partner? So it's a cohesive thing like Bombas. And again, I, I hope I'm getting their slogan right. Buy a sock, donate a sock in essence. Okay. Or they, you buy a sock, they give a sock. So create it around what you're doing for us. Get a coach and mastermind. You're going to be in essence, be helping, you know, support a younger generation to get a coach and mastermind. Why also, you know, getting reinvested in yourself. So find, find something that you're passionate about. For me, my eyes changed when I became a father. I, I saw the world differently. You know, people come and they say, oh, you think differently. You look, think outside the box. I said, no, I don't think outside the box. I just live in a world without a box. And the reason that that's so easy and helpful for me now is because I get to look through my child's eyes and I get to be a kid again. So when you're going about it, shed the grown up mentality. What sounds fun? What sounds cool? What is actually going to make me smile when I get up in the morning? What is actually going to drive me without someone sitting there and prodding me constantly? And when you see that and when you can solve a problem and then when you can tie it back into your company and the, the, the purpose sh reveals itself, literally reveals itself right there. And it just kind of goes on. It just fits like a nice glove. You can pick one person to give the strategy award to when everybody's zigging, this person is zagging. But from your perspective, they're doing the right thing. Who do you pick? Dr. Jeff Spencer. He is my corner man. He is, he is, uh, words can't describe him. He is a gift. He truly is. When I bring someone to Jeff, it is like I am wrapping this and I am gifting it to the other person. And, and he is behind over 40 Olympic medals, um, Tiger Woods during his height, uh, Sir Richard Branson, and so many other names. I know that those, but those are the names that people are like, oh, wait a minute. Now, now I might want to go look up Dr. Jeff Spencer. So, and he was an Olympian himself, but Dr. Jeff Spencer, he inverts what we think is just common. So he'll take it and he'll turn it on its belly. How do you know Jeff? I'm in a mastermind with Jeff Spencer. Nice, nice. So, um, yeah, over the last couple of years, you know, when you start getting in this world and people realize what you're doing and what you're building and people start gifting you people. And so um, over the last couple of years, people are like, I got introduced to Dr. Jeff Spencer, Dr. Jeff Spencer. And I just keep hearing the name coming and coming. And coming. I'm like, great. And I never push it. When someone says, I want to introduce you to someone, I'll ask once. And then if I hear nothing, no big deal. And so earlier this year, I get a, uh, a video text. And it's, it's by a good friend of mine, Mark Fujiwara, brilliant man. And he sits there and he says, Dr. Jeff Spencer, Brandon Straza, blah, blah, blah. I think the two of you need to meet. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I have his cell phone number now. Like, how cool is this? And um, we, we get on a call and and I, I explained who I am, what I'm building and where I'm at and what I've built. And the rest is where we're at today. So he's helping shape not only myself, sculpt not only myself, be in my corner, but he's also at the same time helping us shape how we have the conversations with the right coaches and how we're you know, the, I, I don't know if I want to say the psychology behind what we're building out, but he is literally a gift that I get to spend time with every week and uh, sometimes twice a week, which is super cool. And it's just it's, it's a pleasure to uh, to get to be in Jeff's world. Beautiful. Absolutely. And um, what are three books that inspired you most? Yeah, um, so I'm going to go with number one, and they're sitting over there. And the reason I have this awesome shelf that you can see in the court corner is because of you, my friend, like 
I, I, you said get do X. I had someone order it and it was here before we even spoke last. So over here, we've got our books. And so I'm going to start out with um, Steve Sims, Blue Fishing. Mm -hmm. It's an easy read. And when I say that, I, I mean that with complete respect. Mm -hmm. But Steve Sims is an amazing human being. They call him the real Wizard of Oz. Uh, his clientele go from Elon Musk to Sir Richard Branson to on and on and on and on. And when you read that, now I've been to prison with Steve, but that's a whole nother story. But when you read the book, you realize what's possible. You realize getting uncomfortable because comfort kills. You're just like, this guy was a bricklayer in the middle of London. And now the here is clientele because he didn't stop. He didn't quit. And so Blue Fishing um, by Steve Sims. Mm -hmm. The next one that I'm going to go with is right over here. And it's called Bumpers. Nick Peterson. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's misspellings. There's grammar errors. It's, you know, I, I gifted this book to a lot of the coaches on the platform right now. And every one of them said the same thing. Amazing. Oh, my gosh. The takeaways and, and how they're able to streamline their own life and their business. And they're like, but the, the grammar errors and the spelling. I'm like, but that's Nick. That That's just Nick. It wasn't even meant to be a book. People said he, he wrote, you know, uh, whatever it was. And they're like, you got to put this in a book. But they're like, he's like, well, you know, I have to get it. They're like, no, don't change a thing. Who cares? So Bumpers, another amazing book. And then right now, um, Michael Burnoff, Average Sucks. He, he gifted me that book. And it's right over there, Average Sucks. And that is just, he's another amazing human being um, that, uh, that I've had the fortune of getting to know through Steve Sims and interview. So I would say Average Sucks because let's be honest, the book says it itself. Average does suck. Why would you want to be average? You want to be extraordinary, man. Come on. So those are three books. I'll give you a fourth one that I'm reading right now, if you don't mind. And it's really helping me throughout my companies. A world without email. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not sitting there saying for email marketers because I think it's the amazing stuff. I love what you email out. I love what some of our other friends in our community email out. But it's making me think differently on how much we are um, we are owned by our email inside of our company, and how do we how do we tweak that? It's more inner company is how it's really pertaining to what I'm seeing. So that's that's a fourth one right now that uh, I'm currently reading. Beautiful, and uh, I am also super curious to hear who you nominate as my next guest after one word from our sponsors. Hey, if you love what you are hearing, you will love our free masterclasses. Go grab them at strategiesprints.com. You know, so cool people that uh, I am now really curious, like Jeff Spencer and, uh, uh, and uh, Sims, who also was on this podcast already and was amazing. Uh, so I'm now really curious who should be my next guest. Well, so, okay, so great. You've already had people that I was going to nominate on there. So I'm going to nominate someone that put that, that, uh, pushes is the wrong word, but I'll say it anyways, pushes billions of pounds of protein on a yearly basis. His connections are, are, are amazing. Um, that I'm, I'm picturing their faces and the names are becoming blank on me right now. Uh, but he is, he's just, he's another amazing human being, Jeff Moore. And I look forward to making that connection uh, later on today. So as soon as we get off, I'll make sure that I, I know I just talked about a world without email. I'm going to email you and Jeff together and make that introduction right there. But Jeff is, a, he's a gift as well. Beautiful. And so the last CEO tip that you have for us is to build relationships that strengthen the business. Um, this ties well to masterminds. Can you unpack that? Yeah. So... And I got to start kind of from the beginning to where I messed up, where I made mistakes. So it kind of gives you context for why it's so important and why it takes a little bit of time. 20 some odd years, I networked in my own world, my own community, finance, banking, insurance, all that kind of good stuff. And we all just kind of thought the same way. And sometimes you'd have an outlayer and everyone just pulls that outlayer back into the herd because no one likes to get, get out of the herd. Once you get out of the herd, you're not, you know, you're, you're doing things that you're not supposed to. 
And so I just, I sat in that world and I was creative, but I just, I wasn't happy. And so again, when, when I learned about masterminds, I'm just like, I've been doing it wrong. I should be learning from other people. I should be listening. I should be doing all these other things. I should be learning. And I started building a network without directly trying to like, okay, here's my goal. I need to connect with X amount of people a day and, and make Y connections because I didn't sit there and say, Hey, I have to do this or I'll fail. It just started happening organically. And I'm not always the biggest fan of the word organically, but it did. I started actually just having conversations, pulling aside and saying, okay, Hey, here's, here's, here's what I do. Here's, here's what I own. Let's have this conversation over here. And then I just started bleeding into having other conversations with other people. And, and now the, I, I have to code people in my cell phone. Like, how is it that I found them? Or I use MindMeister was another key thing right there. Cause I will eventually, I'll be like, wait, how many degrees are we separated from this person right here? And it makes a connection so much easier. So MindMeister and how I code people in my phone for how we're connected. So if I type in TSF, I pull up anyone that's connected with what would be considered TSF, the success finder, MME, mastermind effects. So I, I, I go back, if I've been in a mastermind, I make sure I put initials for what that mastermind is so I can always pull up and go back to that record right there. And it's amazing when you slowly do it, how big of a resource you create over a two year period. Now, Several, several years ago, that would have given me maybe a little bit of anxiety, like, oh my God, I got to do this over two years, but I've got all these other things to do. I've got all this other, you know, energy that needs to go somewhere. But because I didn't focus on it and I just enjoyed the process, it just naturally started happening. The Rolodex started to, to grow and to build. And then all of a sudden I start getting people calling me. I had someone the other day, so we're going to have an event in August and they said, Hey, we haven't even promoted this. Haven't even said a thing about what we're doing in August. Hey, I heard you're having an event in August. So-and-so sent me. And I'm just like, that is when you know that you have done it the right way. That's when you know you've brought the value. Lead with the give mentality. Don't say, hey, what can I, what can I get out of you? How can you, number one, just get to know the other person before you start spewing what you do and what you want to sell and what, you know, who you are. Get to know the person. And then organically, I'll go back to that word again, a relationship starts happening, a respect starts happening. And when you need that part, when you need something, someone says, hey, I need someone that can help me build an empire, someone that can help me, you know, I need a coach. I can go to that Rolodex and be like, hey, don't worry, I'm not your person and that's okay, but I've got someone for you. When, you, when people come to you for the resource, even though they know you might not be the person, but you're gonna have that person, you're gonna have that Jeff Spencer, that Steve Sims, that Jeff Moore, that Nick Peterson, that is when you're like, okay, a couple years of this, it didn't even seem like pain. It was so easy. It just happened and now you're that resource. So take your time back into it. And there are free masterminds out there, people. There are some amazing free masterminds, so don't say I can't afford it. So who should contact you if they say, wow, that resonates to me. I, I want to do this mastermind thing on Brandon's platform. Is it people who have a mastermind already or is it people who think about starting a mastermind? Who should contact you? Yeah. So right now we're working with the people that are doing it. They have a mastermind. They are a coach. Now, here's the cool thing. We've got some we've got uh, people that are being referred to us. So like when someone refers, let's say you call and you say, hey, I was sent over here. You get that that proverbial um, blue checkbox, you know, the one that you see in the social standards. Like if, if Simon sits there and says, hey, Brandon, you need to talk to Steve Smith, go with the generic name. They automatically go to the top of the list because you're already a trusted advisor, you're already a trusted source. So we're going to listen to that person and we'll sit there and we'll say, hey, listen, let's go on this journey. Let's get you over here with this group, this people over here. They're going to help kind of build that out for you. They're going to help work with you and get you to that point. But we're right now we're working with and we're bringing on the platform, which we've closed it down. We're getting ready to open up again. We've already started taking applications for the right coaches. Not everyone gets approved. That's OK. Um, but it's, it's the people that have a coaching program, a mastermind. Those are the ones that we're bringing on there right now because we want to build that portfolio of the result leaders out there. And 
If they don't do it, what do they miss? Which problems will they have? If they don't do it, what problems are they going to have? They're going to continue doing the same thing over and over again, which is the definition of insanity. They're going to continue to use the Facebook groups. They're going to continue to disconnect their community from what matters to them. Once, you, Like we were talking with a coach and their people at the point before they came to us could text them, Facebook Messenger them, Slack them. Um, there was one other way. And they were literally... T not teaching their clients like this is the path when you need x you do y they they almost they over communicated in how many different ways you can connect with them which means you're losing your own time time and resources are limited and <laughs> they're just limited so when when she constricted that and said here's the path you go every time when you need this resource it saved that coach time and money because they directed, they created intent for their, for their member to come find them in the right way. So that's the big thing that we're solving is we're, we're helping the coaches save time because it is, we only have so much of it and now we're making more of it for you. And do you also help market the mastermind? We do, we do. So that's, that's in the, that's in the works to where we will help market those masterminds. You know, we'll, we'll deal with the, the ads that are out there. Again, those, those, I get it. That's noise. Um, but we are, we are going to actively market the platform to bring people to the right place in the right order at the right time, because it's important to us. If, if I just say, Hey, Simon, bring your entire community over, but we're just allowing you to populate the platform. Now it's, it's a benefit and it makes sense. But if we're just solely relying upon you, then you kind of help build the platform. And what do we do? We just, we created that safe space. So our commitment is to make sure that we also bring members to the community. We had someone just the other day, had four people, as I call it, knocking on your door. And I asked the coach, I said, hey, did you see these four people are wanting inside your group, want to know more, want to have you know, a connection call with you? Yeah, yeah, I'm so busy, I'm over here. And, 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 and I said, You've got four active people. Two of them I actually know. They're they're high six figure earners. The two I the other two I have no clue who they are. They they happen to be on the platform. I don't know anything about them. Um, I said, do you have that where you're you're sitting all the time? He's like, well, no. But I'm you know I'm communicating. I'm like, come on, man. Four people, and and this is a high ticket mastermind. This is a ten thousand dollar a year mastermind. And uh, of course, you know when he got a little prod. He, he hopped on it pretty quickly afterwards, but they had been sitting there for two weeks waiting for a response. Super cool. Brandon, is there anything I forgot to ask you? You didn't. You asked what you meant to ask when you meant to ask it. So I'm good. This is your show. Um, I just, I appreciate being able to, you know, bend your ear, have a, an amazing conversation. And um, what I want out of this is for your listeners to get something. So if you want to take action out of it, Head on over to the Success Finder, download it, and uh, send me a message. I'll help guide you on your journey over there. The Success Finder, everybody. Brandon Strassa. Thank you so much, Brandon, for being here. And uh, have a great day. Avoid trying to do thousands of things that doesn't work. We have 274 templates for your business success. Reach your ambitious goals with one-on-one -on -one sprint coach. We double your revenue in 90 days.